Hey folks, welcome back. This is Dr. Eric, and in today's video, we are going to be reviewing the exercise called the pelvic rock. Now, the pelvic rock is one of my favorites within Revolution in Motion because it is so sneaky effective. Um, the reason being is because the pelvic floor is probably one of the most underrated aspects in terms of strength and conditioning and performance and athleticism, but also pain management. There is rarely a time I have a patient come into my office and they aren't having problems within their pelvic floor, right? They've got back pain, hip pain, knee pain, ankle pain, even upstream back pain, shoulder pain, neck pain, and more times than not, they've got something going on within the pelvic floor. So by using the pelvic rock, we can start to restore a very healthy, very robust, very functional pelvic floor. Um, let's just dive right into it. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the pelvic rock exercise. So for this exercise, all you're gonna be needing is a stability ball for equipment. So go ahead and sit right on top of that ball. You're gonna have your shoes and socks off. Your feet are gonna be hip width distance apart. Toes are pointed forward. Knees are stacked right above the ankles. From here, go ahead and draw your abs in and up towards the front of your spine. So that abdominal hollowing. Lift your torso, float your head. Let your tailbone relax down, sink down towards the floor and let your shoulders fall in place. And so now what we can do is pay attention to our pelvic floor. So imagine that your pelvis, your pelvic floor is a bowl, because essentially it is. And we're gonna start rocking side to side. So you're gonna rock from one side, from one sit bone, rocking to the other sit bone. Okay, just continue rocking side by side. As you rock side by side, you want to pay attention. You wanna make sure that the movement is occurring primarily in our lower abdominals right here below our rib cage. As you go through this exercise, if you notice that your upper body is also moving with it, see if you can quiet that area, right, by promoting torso lift, floating your head, but also see if you can quiet your knees as well as you rock side by side, again, from one sit bone to the other sit bone, back and forth, all right? From here, we're gonna go ahead and go forward and back since we just went side to side. I'll show you from the side here. So sitting on the ball, same position. Now you're going to tilt in, tilting the pubic bone in and up toward the ceiling and then releasing. So as you tilt the pubic bone in, you're gonna be rolling to your tailbone and then releasing. You can also use your hands and really kind of impart that, that spring effect, that elastic effect. So I'm gonna use, press my hands right on my lower abdominals and then release. Press in and release, just like so. Tilting in, tilting the pubic bone in, rolling or rocking to the tailbone, and releasing. Okay, in doing so, again, we can think about how our, our pelvis is elastic, right? We want to work with the fascia, the connective tissue in and around the pelvic floor, which again has an elastic nature, so we want to restore that with the specific type of movement. Now, what we're going to do is combine the front and back and the side to side, and we're going to perform circles. So, start on one sit bone. Go to your tailbone or rock to your tailbone to the other sit bone and the pubic bone and then you can repeat sit sit bone tailbone sit bone pubic bone and then just keep going in circles just like so once more being mindful of any other extra movements in this exercise so notice how i'm just working through the pelvic floor right right below my rib cage i'm not letting my upper body i'm not allowing my upper body to move or another way of saying it, I'm keeping my upper body quiet at the same time with my knees, right? Now for me, I've got some hip stuff going on, so my knees like to get involved a little bit, but I do my best to really uh, encourage as much range of motion as I can in the pelvic floor, again, while keeping that in mind. I'm gonna show you a, uh, a variation that you can do with the pelvic rock, and that's going to involve more of our hips, we're gonna integrate more of our hips with the pelvic floor. It's called the plie position. So in this position, our feet are gonna be out a little bit wider, just outside hip width distance apart. Our toes are splayed out and we're staying on the balls, high up on the balls of our feet. And we can go through the same uh, movements that we just did, but with a different foot position. So again, let's go side to side. So from one sit bone to the other sit bone. And you might notice a lot more work occurring specifically in the hip, right? Again, feel that 
what, what I like to call loading. You might feel loading in one hip as you rock to one sit bone and a rebound effect as you rock to the other one. Like a little, again, like a little rubber band. You go from one sit bone, you're stretching the rubber band, you're releasing you know, the other sit bone. Again, we can go forward and back, tilt into the bone in and release. Tilt in and release. And in this position, I really think about that ball and socket joint of our hips, right? Because this is our femur, the head of our femur is right in the socket and the acetabulum of our pelvis. So I think about tilting the pelvis or rocking the pelvis around the head of the femur as you go forward and back. And then finally, once more, circles. So start on the sit bone, to the tailbone, to the sit bone, to the tube bone, and then reverse. Make sure that you always do one circle at a time, right, in each direction, you're always reversing. Okay, so that's the pelvic rock. I hope you guys get a lot of value out of this. Again, this is one of my favorite exercises. I use it quite often. I give it to my patients quite often, and they love it. All right, once more, my name is Dr. Eric, and I'll catch you guys next time.